Hi there, and welcome to the podcast. Today we're going to talk about supply chain economics and inventory management uh, on eBay. And we're going to talk about some common things that you can run into and the best way to overcome them uh, to get yourself the best feedback possible for the transaction and to make the customer happy at the same time. So um, one of the first things you can run into is if you sell things that are beyond the inventory that you have on hand. So sometimes, whether it could be a clerical error when you're making the actual listing, you might actually put a wrong quantity count off uh, on the item that you actually have. You might miscount something and you might put the wrong quantity. Um, you might have given somebody an extra one you didn't know it depending on how small or how large it is. Um, I mean, there's a multitude of things that could happen in regards to your inventory. Uh, I recommend doing at least inventory uh, once a week, maybe once every two weeks depending on the size of your store. If you're like a medium-sized store, if you're a large store, you might have to do it almost every other day or every time you do a shipment. You might have to take inventory. Every time I, I ship my packages, I usually am doing inventory. Um, this also allows me to understand what I need to replace, um, and I can forecast when I need to purchase these replacements so that I don't run out of stock in my store. Um, but again, sometimes it it happens where you're the, the, the person you're getting from the manufacturer, the person you're sourcing your materials from, they might not have any at the moment and you might have to wait for them to get them in before you can get your supply in. So you want to stagger your shipments of your inventory that you receive in uh, that correlates with you know how fast you're moving your product. Now occasionally um, you'll have someone that buys a large amount in bulk uh, and that would throw off your inventory expectations and your demands. So uh, when that situation like that arises and let's say you overextend yourself with sales on an item that you might not have in stock uh, anymore because if you had a, either a large bulk purchase or something happened where you were either sick or something was overlooked, um, the best thing to do is to reach out to the customer and let them know, hey, uh, you know, this is what's going on. Uh, I wasn't able to get your order out. If you would like, you know, me to refund you, I could refund you. Uh, but I should be getting them in, you know, two days from now. If you don't mind waiting two more days uh, for your order to ship, then that's fine. But if not, I could refund you now. Um, depending on what the order is, maybe if it's something that ships with with uh, tracking, where you're able to give them some freebies, maybe if you have some freebies to give them, like stickers or something, feel free to toss those in there and offer them to them, offer that to them when you explain to them, hey, listen, if you wait two days, I'll toss in some freebies uh, for your troubles. It depends on what your store is and what your really what your marketability is. If you're selling like multiple quantity items for really cheap, maybe toss them a couple extra. Um, uh, always give them the option to refund them because refund them or cancel the transaction depending on how far you are through the transaction. If you've already printed the shipping label and paid the 260 for it or whatever it costs to ship it, um, then yeah, obviously you can't cancel the transaction. You'd have to actually issue them a refund. So, um, But if they know that you've paid for a shipping label with tracking, most of the time, I'd say 9 out of 10 times, if not 10 out of 10, uh, they will want the item still because they know that you've already paid for tracking and they have the tracking number and they see that there is a tracking number created for it. So 99% of the time they won't request you to refund them unless they're re unless it's something that they're really looking for uh, that's really important to them and they need it in a time-sensitive manner. Uh, or they can get it elsewhere and you're not the only one that's offering it. So um, And they can get it when they were expecting to get it originally. So... Um, but yeah, in all honesty, the best bet is to, to usually contact the buyer, let them know what's going on, touch base with them. Um, you'll not only save yourself the negative feedback, but the quicker that you get to them and communicate with them, the better. So don't sit on it for a day or two before you contact them, hoping that things are going to change, because the only thing that's going to happen is they're going to actually get more infuriated by not being brought into what's going on sooner because they're involved with the purchase as well. And you shouldn't be hiding anything from the buyer if something's going on. Reach out to them. Most of the time, they'll not only respond to you, but they'll respond to you in a really positive manner and be completely understanding about the situation for you reaching out to them. So in regards to best practices on eBay, uh, being a seller and integrating with buyers and in regards to your inventory levels being off and you not being able to fill your, fulfill your orders, always offer them that, that option to wait for the the order to come in so that you could ship their you could ship their items to them or offer them a refund or to cancel the order uh, that's going to be your best bet 
the longer you wait, the longer you risk getting negative feedback. And that's the last thing that you want. So I hope these tips helped you out today. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And have a good day.